Here we are coming to you live from the top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52, just outside of Kennewick, Washington. This is Pastor Mike, and I am online, and I am live. And uh, we got to take care of a couple things before we get into the the heart and soul of what is the Pastor Mike Online live, actually almost live broadcast. You see, because by the time my face and my voice get to you, it's already like a second, two seconds, ten seconds behind, something like that. That's because, you know... I don't know why it is that way. But anyway, it's good to be here today. But we have to say happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you, Adrian uh, from the Netherlands is having a birthday today. He is like 647 years old today or something like that. And uh, they just had uh, they just had a baby, another baby. Uh, for them, congratulations to that on the birth of JL. They got that from the book of Judges, and we're glad for them. They've been following us for uh, quite a while, and so we appreciate them letting us know that. Uh, there's something I think uh, that you all probably need to pack your bags and get ready to go to. Uh, somebody sent me this. This is uh, from a website, walkingterracrista.com. I don't know who Terra Krista is. Some gal, I don't know, named Tara. Learn how to be a fifth dimensional master is the website. They're having a we sack ceremony. We sack. I don't know what they're going to sack, but they're going to have a ceremony when they sack it. Um, the, it. This was interesting to me because of the caption on the website said, Inner Earth Teachings for the Upper Earth. Oh, I, I got that one. I saw it. I'm going, I get it. Inner, inner earth, what's, what's down inside the earth? What's down there? Uh, inner earth teachings for the upper earth. And it's all about bringing in a new world. Uh, and they have a caption on here, the threefold flame of Gaia. A, spirit, a spiritual invocation ceremony, Thursday, May 23rd, 2013. That's already happened. I missed it. I was... Actually, the truth of it is, that's where I was while I was on vacation. I was at the Gaia Ceremony, Mount Shasta, California. But it was just interesting to me that they, uh, these people believe that uh, through their invocations, they're going to invoke their gods. And I guess in a way that that's true. Um, the God that you and I serve, the God that you and I pray to, the God that you and I believe in, the God that is our Father, He is the Creator of everything, He is all-loving, uh, he loves his people. Uh, I can tell you that there are, I don't want to say God can never be invoked. I, I don't want to, I, I don't know that I could go that far. But as far as uh, thinking that if you perform a ritual or if you say a mantra or say words, or if we can get everybody together um, uh, like Pastor Haggard, not Hoggard, Haggard mega church pastor out in Colorado uh, who told everybody that God gave him a vision. God actually told him in a vision that if he could get a million people to pray, then there would be no Gulf War after uh, September 1st, 2001. There would be no, no loss of life in, in Iraq as a result of that. If we could just get a million people to pray. So we go to war over there. Sh soldiers are killed. I emailed the prayer center that, uh, what was his name, Ted Ted Haggard, something like that. Uh, I emailed his prayer center and said, okay, what happened? Did we not get a million people to pray? And I sent them the email. They sent it back saying, you'd have to ask Pastor Haggard that question. Yeah, right. He was busy smoking methamphetamine with uh, gay prostitutes. That's what he was busy doing, uh, smoking. You don't smoke methamphetamine, do you? I don't even know what you do with it. Uh, but anyway, our God, um, I, 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 I think you just ask him things. I think you just bow your head, or I think you kneel somewhere. I think you're in the car, or I think you're laying in bed, or I think you're just sitting out under a tree outside. And I think that you can ask God, and God listens, and God blesses, and God hears you, and God gives you things, and God will give you power. He doesn't need to be... 
uh, ritualized into provocation or invocation. That's the other gods that have to have that done. You have to invoke them. Aleister Crowley builds the Bolskine house, and he has it built where its alignment is such a way, and he's got this big sacred magic room in there that when he goes in there and he aligns himself and he says the right words and does the right chants and, and all of the things that he does, draws a circle, have you you remember the circle maker, right? He draws a big circle in the ground and does all this stuff, hoping to get in contact with this little deity of his. He, he didn't know the right God because the God that you and I serve says, call unto me and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Um, I tweeted today for your benefit and just to let you know kind of what was on my mind today, I, I asked the question, will the United States of America still be here in 10 years' time? Um, I was thinking about, uh, just kind of thinking about things and, and coming in, I look at Drudge Report, I look at other news things and so on, just to see what's going on in the world. And if you, um, if you just stop and ponder what has happened in this country, um, you want to say in the last six years, the last seven years, what has happened, um, you can even go all the way back to uh, September 11, 2001, at what has happened in this country, where we have gone in uh, 10, 12, 13 years, something like that. What, what is happening here? It's not, we don't have the innocency in this country, innocency in this country anymore. We don't have um, the whole gay marriage thing, the whole sodomite marriage thing has erupted within the last 10 years. I mean, back in the 90s, yeah, there were sodomites everywhere. We didn't, you know, they never said anything about wanting to be married. Back in the 80s, back in the 70s, they never said anything about wanting to be married. It's just been in the last 10 years that they've been pushing this thing. So we've lost an innocency in this country. We, we are promoting on a grand scale murder, death, um, immorality uh, in a in a very very huge large way is what we're doing. And I was just thinking about the days that I grew up in. I I was born in '66, but I grew up in the '70s. That's kind of where all my memories are from the '70s. I was in high school in the '80s. Man, the '80s were awesome, dude. Um, got married and had children through the 90s, now ministering this way in the, uh, in the 21st century. And we don't have the same country we used to have a long time ago. It, there's, there, we are, we're, we're, it seems like we're on the verge of a collapse. Uh, nothing's right. I mean, look at the things that, have, that have Obama has been dealing with in, in just the past few months, and so he's had to deal with the IRS, which, by the way, I've got. Let me go ahead and do this. There was a, uh, a, a news agency that actually posted a transcript. There was an audio recording from an IRS agent, a transcript, a phone conversation between IRS agent Sherry Wan to pro-life revolution president Ania jo Joseph. So here, here we are right here. Now, for the first time in, in uh, American history, it's, it's just sort of coming out to light how that government is not by the people, of the people, and for the people. It's now turning into government of the special interest groups, government of big business, and government against the people. Government against the people. Now, for, forget if, if you just happen to be listening to me and you are pro-abortion. Set that aside for a minute. Because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. But now we have an active protocol in Washington, D.C., under the Obama administration, that is actively targeting those who have a political dissension against the ruling party and the ruling elite in Washington, D.C., 
And while all the liberals are trying to say, well, this is no big deal. It, you know, it's not, it's nothing, you know, don't worry about it. This is just how America is and so on and so on. They wouldn't like it if George Bush, either one of them, or Ronald Reagan had a system in place to do this to people. If it came out that either of the Bushes or Ronald Reagan had an active protocol in the IRS to target liberal-only groups and not give them tax-exempt status or to scrutinize them or, as you're going to see in this transcript, a government agent telling an American tax-paying citizen that they do not have the right that they think they have. Here's the transcript. Uh, this is from Agent Sherry. Her words exactly are, so you have your right, you have your freedom, you have your religious rights, you have a right to believe what you believe, you have the right to think about what you should do, what is right for you to do. Okay, and, but, however, I don't know why those and, but, however, uh, this freedom also unintelligible to other people. Other people also have the freedom. You know, for the personal view, maybe I go with you. However, I have to, unintelligible, the Internal Revenue Service. What did she say there? I have to stick with the law because, you know, we have to keep it neutral. And then Ania Joseph says, I understand that you have to stick with the law. The agent says, yeah. Uh, you have the religious freedom, the freedom of speech, and other people also have the civil rights, human rights. You cannot, you know, use your religious belief to tell other people you don't have a belief. So I don't believe you need the right to, I, listen to this now, I want to read this again. I, this is the government, this is the government of the United States of America, an agent of representative of the Barack Hussein presidency who says I don't believe you need the right to do this start confrontation uh, protesting uh, protesting things you don't apply for tax exemption status for this I don't believe this is the government I don't believe you have the right or you need the right to do this and let me back up in her statement. You cannot, you know, use your religious belief to tell other people you don't have a belief. Well, Agent, uh, what was her name again? Agent Sherry Wan, W-A-N, or maybe it's Wan. And Wan. Let me read you what my rights are according to my constitution. My contract that God made with me, let me tell you what my rights and my obligations are under my constitution. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what he said. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And it, it's been brewing for years. It's been, uh, let me straighten myself up a little bit here. It's been brewing for years. It's been coming down the road for quite a while. We've seen it coming. We know that at some point, uh, there is going to be a turn in this nation, and I believe that we're seeing it right now, a turn in this nation against Bible Christianity. Now, the Tony Jones slash Rick Warren type of Christianity, they're fine. They're good. There's nothing going to happen to them. But pure Bible Christianity is being turned against in this country right now. It, it, it existed in pockets of academia. It existed in pockets of liberalism. It existed in some small churches. But now it has grown. It's in the media. It's in books. It's in TV shows, the Oprah Winfrey Network, and so on. And now there are active protocols in the halls of our government 
to shut down or shut up the mouths of Bible believing Christians. Our our ideas are dangerous somehow, somewhat. Why? Why are our ideas dangerous? And it's the old conflict, not just between good and evil, but it's the old conflict between freedom and bondage. And the only reason that anybody would ever have for wanting to hold you in bondage is to better themselves, is to uh, enhance themselves or to empower themselves. That's why they have to keep you in bondage. But that's what's going on here. Let's shut up the mouths of the right-wing organizations. Let's shut up the mouths of Bible-believing Christians who believe, as the Bible says, that conception is the beginning of human life. It doesn't start when the abortion doctor says, well, we can't kill this one. I guess we'll have to let it live. That's not when life starts. Life begins in the womb at conception. David said in thy book, all my members were written. It's already there. They just have to grow just like everything in nature grows. Targeting, United States government targeting, going after, tax-paying, constitutional, right-bearing, Bible, I don't know if this person, this um, pro-life revolution president, Ania Joseph, I don't know who she is. But right now she represents those of us in this nation, those of us, in, I would say, around the world, who have been told by an enforcing agent of the federal government, keep your mouth shut. Um... There's another place here. Take your Bible. Take your Bibles. Turn to um, the book of Acts. Where am I looking for here? By the way, while I'm, like, while I'm looking for this, I appreciate, um, appreciate everybody's prayers. appreciate everybody's... Uh, I have felt better in the last two days than I have felt uh, in over a week. Uh, it's just been incredible. Um, I am watching what I'm eating, which I never closed my eyes to eat before. I mean, I just, I don't know. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm on a very restricted diet right now, and, the, and this is primarily self-imposed. The doctor didn't say, here, you can only eat this. And I'm going, no. Uh, it's pretty much self-imposed. After a week of, of learning what I can and cannot do, uh, I can tell you that when my blood sugar gets over somewhere around 150 or something like that, I'm in bed. I mean, that's just that's just it. And so it's sort of a low tolerance uh, issue is what it is. But I appreciate everybody's prayers for me. But one of the things that I'm the one thing I am the only, in fact the only thing that I'm dealing with today is I'm still having a little bit of vision problem. And whereas before it was uh, things that are far away, now I'm dealing with things that are close. So if I have to pull my, my glasses off, I'm, I'm going to have to get a new uh, prescription here. Uh, don't mind me, all right? Uh, anyway, in, in the book of Acts, chapter 5, uh, Peter and John dealt with it. They sat in the IRS office. Peter and John did under the Sanhedrin. They sat in that office when the Sanhedrin told them exactly what the official of the United States government told this lady. They told them, keep your mouth shut. I don't think you should have a right to do what it is you're doing. And if I don't, and as an agent of the IRS, if I don't like what you're doing, I'm going to pull your tax exempt status. People, the donations won't come in anymore because people can't write them off. And I'm going to pull your status and I'm going to go through your books uh, um, and look for anything that I can find because I'm the government. And my president says that we can do that. We can. We can listen to your phone calls. We want to know, we're going to look at your Facebook page because they provided for us a back door into your Facebook account. We can do whatever we want to. We have all the power here. We hold all the keys. We can do whatever we want. And if you don't do what we tell you to do, we're going to make you pay for it. We're going to label you as a terrorist. We're going to come out against you and take all your money and freeze all your assets. And then, who, then what are you going to do? And I guess, I guess really, uh, the other side, 
the people who are being led by the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, I guess that side really doesn't understand good Bible Christians the way they think they do. I mean, they may, they may comprehend the Creflos and the Joyces and the Kinneys and um, all, of the, all of the big money names and all of that stuff, they, and the Joels. They may think they can comprehend that. You see, you, you won't hear Joel Osteen getting up on stage and saying, look, life starts at conception. It's terrible. You've done a terrible thing when you aborted your baby. You'll never hear Joel say that, and so he's safe. He's not going to have his tax-exempt status revoked by the IRS. It's going to be okay with him. They told him a list of things that he can and cannot say, and he's not going to break the rules because that would be negative after all. So he's not going to break the rules. But I guess they don't understand the nature of real, true, born-again, Bible-believing Christians. Is that you cannot hold a dollar bill in front of us and wag us around with it and make us do whatever you want us to do with it. You can't do that. Not to real Bible-believing Christians. One of the um, principles that, that God gave me um, several years ago as we were, as God was leading or getting ready to lead uh, me, this church, and this ministry into the Watchman broadcast and all the things that happened after that was that, number one, um, the very first Watchman broadcast I put out, uh, we already had a website up. We already had video capabilities on it. And I'm going, oh, that would be easy. And it, it wasn't costing us a dime. No, no money, no expenses going out whatsoever. And, okay, I spent uh, like 1995 at the Home Depot buying a can of green paint for the wall, Okay. Um, but other than that, I was just going to edit it myself and, and do all that and do all the work and so on and so on. I was already being paid by the church, no big deal. And we put it out there, and, and I decided then that it was going to be f free of charge, and we weren't going to um, uh, we weren't gonna copyright everything. In other words, you, we don't want you to copy that now and put it on YouTube. We don't want that. That's what I wanted because I had the idea and the concept that if you are free of charge, then you're free. No one can hold money over you and say, well, we're supporting you. Uh, we've got big money coming in, and we, we don't like really what you're saying here, and uh, we're just afraid that um, if you don't say what we want you to say, we're going to pull the money out. So I thought, well, shoot, if I just give it all away and don't need any money for it, then it's no big deal. Same thing with the watchers packets. Uh, I thought for like 3.2 seconds about saying, well, maybe if you give us like $20 a month, something like that, and the Holy Spirit said no, so we don't charge anything, never have. And so no one can call or write or show up here and say, we don't like what you're saying, uh, and we've been supporting you uh, if you don't change your tune or whatever, we're going to pull the money out. I don't care. If the IRS shuts the church down, freezes the assets, I'm going to do whatever I can to just keep talking. Um, as long as I've got a healthy body, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Peter and John were brought up before the Sanhedrin. And... Um, in verse uh, Acts chapter five, verse no, yeah, Acts chapter four, excuse me, verse nineteen. Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, talking about the Sanhedrin, the seventy, the the elder men of the children of Israel. When they had further threatened them, with what? How do you, let me ask you, how do you threaten Christians? How do you threaten them? You can't. Not a real one. A real, born-again, Bible-believing Christian, you can't hurt him. You can't hurt him. You can't threaten him. 
Not if he really believe. Now he might, he might think, "Oh my goodness, what am I getting in?" I mean, there's there's a part of a flesh. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, going, "Lord, is there another way here?" But once we come to our sober mind and the Spirit of God begins to deal with, we just decide, you know what? You can't threaten me. What are you going to do? Take away my birthday? What are you going to do? Send me to heaven? Wanted to go there anyway. So you can't, you can't threaten true born again Christians. Um, I would encourage you to get a, get a copy of this. I don't, can't remember where I downloaded it from. It's on one of the, the um, there might be a still link on Drudge Report. Transcript of the recording of phone call placed by IRS agent Sherry Wan telling, telling a citizen, a tax paying citizen of the United States of America, keep your mouth shut. You don't have a right. You don't have the right that you think you have. That's just one of the things that's shaking our country. It's, it's making people very, very, there's just a lot of unease right now. Um, last week, uh, last Friday, while I was sick, I was just laying at home in bed. I mean, I couldn't do anything. Uh, I was watching History Channel documentaries. One in particular, it was the History, National Geographic, one of the two. And one was about World War II. Um, and uh, Ariel just sent me an email with a video, a YouTube video on it, and it was just fascinating. Uh, back during World War II, uh, Henry Ford decided that his country needed his help, and he, was, uh, he set up a factory to make B-24 bombers in less than 55 minutes. Every 55 minutes, a new bomber was rolling off the assembly line down there. It was just absolutely amazing. In those days, even though the country was mindful of the war and mindful of what was going on in Germany and Japan and things like that, they had confidence in their president. They had confidence in their elected leaders. They had confidence in their judges. They had confidence in their governors and their and their uh, local politicians. They had confidence in the mayor. They had confidence uh, in the general welfare of the nation. Who has that now? Nobody does. In fact, even, even the liberals of whom Barack Hussein and that ilk are part of, they're mad at him because he's not doing, he's not going liberal enough. But then there are some Democrats that are trying to back away from him saying, I think he's going too far. You're going to hurt me in the next election. And then there's the Tea Party people. And then there's, the, there's folks like us and everybody else going, this guy is out of line. He is, he is out of control. He is destroying this country right now, tearing it apart. And here's another way it's happening. Um, plan B. And I told you this was probably going to happen. Obama allows the morning after pill for under 17-year-olds. President's reversal means emergency contraception drug will be available to women of all ages without a prescription. The Obama administration, administration will stop trying to limit sales of emergency contraception pills, making the morning after pill available to women of all ages without a prescription. U.S. Justice Department uh, said in a letter on Monday that it planned to comply with the court's ruling to allow unrestricted sales of the Plan B one step and that it would withdraw its appeal on the matter. The move is the latest uh, in a lengthy legal fight over the morning after pill uh, which was until recently only available without a prescription to women 17 and older who prevented proof who presented proof of age at a pharmacist counter. Plaintiffs in a federal lawsuit against the FDA said the limit unfairly kept women and girls, girls, 15 year old girls, 13 and 12 year old girls, 14 year old girls. Uh, the, the age, it, it appears at the age at which uh, girls in this country um, can become pregnant is lowering. And so 14-year-old girl goes to her friend's house, her girlfriend's house for a sleepover, and her boy's friends are over there. Mom and dad doesn't know about it. And so she's afraid so she can go to Walmart the next morning without anybody knowing about it and take a pill 
and no one has a right to know. No one has a right to restrict it. No one has a right to say no to her. Now, she cannot go to school and get an aspirin without parental consent. But she can take a, a pill that is so dangerous, a pill that is so deadly that it kills a human being that's of embryonic size or whatever, egg size. That's bad. That is, there's something not right in Barack Obama's thinking, in the people who promoted this. I'll say this, there's something not right with Walmart and Walgreens and all these other drug stores, pharmaceutical stores that sell this stuff. There's something not right with you people. Something's wrong if you're more concerned about making the sale to a 14 or 13 year old girl by giving her a pill that is so unrestricted that she can take it and no one can tell her no. The pharmacist can't say, you know what, you're too young. You need to go home, talk to your mom. You can't tell her that. You have to sell it to her. Something wrong with, something wrong with everybody. I, and I'm asking the question, is this nation going to be around in 10 years? Is the United States of America going to be around in the next 10 years? Uh, let's see here. Rick Warren. I mentioned Rick Warren a while ago. Uh, is he helping or hurting? Pastor Rick Warren says Allah and God are one and the same. Saddleback Church in Lake Forest, California is the eighth largest church in the United States. Uh, don't you feel bad for him? I mean, don't you feel bad he's not number one? Average attendance of 20,000 people or more. Rick Ward. Rick Warren is the founder and senior pastor of this mega church. He also known for his popular book um, and program of church growth known as the Purpose Driven Church. He has built his temple of thousands on a platform of liberal theology. I'm glad this guy, who is this guy anyway? Godfather politics? Never read this before. Uh, anyway, his, his preaching is more emotionally based than spiritually based, which is how, according to Rick Warren, you build a big church. The bottom line of his philosophy is that it is more important to build a big church than teach sound biblical theology. In his typical liberal fashion, Pastor Rick Warren has joined a movement known as King's Way. The movement's goal, you might want to Google this and check out the information for yourself, King's Way. The movement's goal is to bring Christians and Muslims together with either group trying to proselytize or, or either with, without either group trying to proselytize or convert the other. Bring them together. As part of this effort, Warren announced that he wants to create a set of principles that both evangelical Christians and Muslims could agree to in the effort to bring churches and mosques closer together. One of those principles is that we both worship the same God. In other words, God and Allah are one and the same deity. Sorry, Pastor Rick Warren, but you couldn't be more wrong. If you really believe this, it demonstrates just how far from the Bible you have strayed. Yes, I know that Muslims trace their history back to, the, to Ishmael, the son of Abraham and Jews, and Christians trace their history back to Isaac, also the son of Abraham. Warren used this common history as the basis, making a statement on God and Allah being one and the same. However, the Muslim view of Allah is not the same as the Christian view of God. Here are some major differences, and he goes on to talk about that. And so you ask the question, he asks the question, so who exactly does Rick Warren worship? Does he worship God and Jesus Christ, or does he worship Allah, who denies the deity of Christ? Well, that became apparent when Rick Warren, who decided that he wanted the favor of Barack Hussein and his government rather than the favor of God, showing up and praying a blessing over the inauguration of Barack Hussein and praying it in the name of Isa, which is the Muslim version of Jesus. Knowing full, and he wasn't just using Jesus in other languages. He was specifically bringing in to the Muslims listening to him the theology and the doctrine behind the name Isa, 
Now, I understand that not everybody in the world speaks English. I understand that. I understand that not everybody, uh, that, uh, that um, I understand that Jesus is pronounced different ways in different parts of the world. That's not what Rick Warren was doing. What he was doing was, was calling into memory those of a Muslim faith, saying to them, I'm one of you. Because when they heard the name Isa, to them, it was a Jewish prophet who will come back with the Imam Mahdi of the last days, the 12th Imam, who will come back and tell everybody, you should have been Muslims all along. That's what I was trying to tell everybody. And Matthew and Mark and Luke and John got it all messed up. <laughs> and Paul. Um, shaky ground. When and let's go back to the days of World War II. In those days, sure, in this country there were Muslims. There were people that, of ethnic origin from Saudi Arabia, Iran, uh, Iraq, Lebanon. You name it, they were they were here. They enjoyed the freedom that you and I had, but we have a different spirit now than we had back then. Back then, Christianity was was the religion of America. It was in the hearts of the Americans. It was what America was. Not anymore. Now we're so turbulent. Now we have Islamic law, Sharia law, wanting to take over and destroy the very foundation of this country. Number one, the scriptures. Number two, the Constitution. And then we have guys like Rick Warren patting these people on the back for doing it. And when you have that kind of superpower, when you have elements of the government that are against a vast majority of what is the heart of the American people, then you add to that the religious people of America, the religious leaders of America, like Rick Warren and Billy Graham and, and, and Joel Osteen and countless, countless others who are siding with the people who have decided that there's no other course for America but to destroy her and turn her into an Islamic state. Their vision is that one of these days, the crescent moon flag will be flying over every state park in this country. That's their goal. And you have religious leaders all over this country applauding them, bowing to them, kissing up to them, and patting them on the back and saying, we're with you 100% because we worship the same God. Well, they do. It's not the God of the Bible, though. How long are we going to last, people? I'm not trying to scare you. Here's another article. I don't even know if I can read this one. I mean, it's not bad. I just, I don't know if I can read it. Pastor of California Church sponsoring interfaith dialogue with Wiccans teaches tolerance to concerned citizen. Wiccans are covered by God's grace. Now, let me, let me, let me deal with that one. Galatians. I mean, I, I covered this so many times, I think, in the past. But it just, it's, it, it's the Bible stands. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And what was Paul talking about? The, he was talking about that it was the witchcraft that was brought in, Jewish witchcraft, Kabbalah, that was brought into these churches under the guise of keeping the law. Are you listening to me? And he called it witchcraft, and it's the opposite of grace. And if it's the opposite of grace, it's not grace. It's law-keeping. This pastor in California had this little seminar, wants everybody to know that he believes that Wiccans, you can be a pagan, you can be an adulterer and a fornicator, which in a lot of rituals, that's what goes on. You can do all those things. You can chant. You can do specifically what God said don't do as far as religious practices is concerned. And you can still go to heaven. Um... Uh, Pastor of Fairview Community Church has taken a leaf out of Pope Francis' book concerning grace. If God's grace covers everyone, including atheists and non-Christians, it covers Wiccans too. 
Uh, Wicca is a federally recognized religion in America. Its members either practice in groups uh, or solitary. It is a nature-centered religion that recognizes deity as both male and female, god and goddess. I, I, hey, where do we know about that one? And from there, Wiccans and pagans follow their own chosen uh, pantheons and blah, blah, blah. But this pastor is now telling everybody they are under the same grace that God gives to everybody else. So sure, all the roads lead to the exact same God. It's just not the God of the Bible. Now, is America, and I have a list here also. Let's, let me look at this list for a minute here. Vigilant Citizen. Um, he has a Bilderberg's attendee list. Let me see here. Um, let me look under the H's. Hang on a second. There is a Fisherman, Flint, Gallagher, Geithner, Timothy Geithner. Uh, let's see, Donald Graham. No, it's not Billy, is it? No. Uh, let's see here. Ha uh, let's see, Halberstadt from the Netherlands. Ooh. Simon Henry from Great Britain. Paul Hemmerlin from France. Let's see here. No, no Hoggards. No Hoggards at the Bilderberg meeting. Let's see who we can find here. We found Timothy Geithner. And I'm liable to set my glasses over here and then throw them somewhere or them fall on the ground. Tim Geithner was there. Let's see who else here. Let's start at the, hey, let's go to look at the USA here. Roger Altman. I don't know who that is. Yeah, let's see here. Jeff Bezos. Oh, yeah. Amazon.com at the Bilderberg meeting. I thought I recognized that name. Who else here from the good old USA is going to sell out our national sovereignty at a top secret meeting that no one can know anything about? Michael Evans, chairman of Goldman Sachs. Boy, doesn't that sound about right? Uh, let's see here. Mark Fishman, president of uh, Novartis Institutes of Biomedical Research. Wonder what, wonder why he's there. Wonder what they're planning. Tim Geithner. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, Donald, who's the Washington Post? Donald Graham, uh, USA. Kenneth Jacobs, chairman and CEO of Lazard. Uh, James Johnson, uh, chairman Johnson Capital Partners. Vernon Jordan, hey, that name rings the bell, managing director. Uh, he used to be in politics. Robert Kaplan, uh, let's see here. Alex Carp, Alex, I don't see Alex Jones on here either. He wasn't invited. But the list goes on of all the people that all the United States of Americans that are at the Bilderberg meeting, political leaders. Um, there was uh, some photographs released. It looked like Hillary was there, and they were trying to, there was a whole list of photographs, and some of them, they didn't know who the people were, but it looked like Hillary uh, had showed up. I don't know that for sure. It looks like she had showed up at the Bilderberg meeting. What's the big deal about the Bilderberg meeting in, in America? Bilderberg is all about secrecy. It's all about power. It's all about control. It's all about um, uh, conglomeration getting all the nations together, moving in the same direction, working together hand in hand, and so on and so on. And it's not really about world peace. It's not really about uh, how we can make the world a better place. It's about how these people can consolidate their power in such a way as that they are the ones who have control over everything. And it has, no, it, it, I, I, I want to say it has nothing to do with you. Of course it has everything to do with you because it's going to affect you. But do you think that they care about you? Do you think that they are going there and and somebody from the United States saying, you know, one of these one of these bankers is going, you know, I got I got guys that come to my bank and they're having some trouble on their farms. Is there anything we can do for them? They'll laugh and cut up and throw this guy out. They're, they're not in it for the people. They're in it for the money and they're in it for the power. And so if you just if you just happen to if you just happen to destroy the nation, if you just happen to destroy the republic that America is, it's, it's, it's no big deal. No big deal. As long as we keep in charge and keep all of our money. Now, I had told you that 
something like this was going to happen. And this is not a, I keep saying that, this is not a big uh, show where I'm going to say, see, I told you so. Um, and where was I going to, where was I going to turn here? Oh, I got it up on the screen. Here is a, a news article. Michelle sent me this. Appreciate it, Michelle. Breaking. Colorado to split into two states. Formation of 51st state, northern Colorado, has begun with eight northern counties. Officials in eight northern Colorado counties united in opposition to the state's new gun control laws and oil and gas regulations are reportedly considering forming a, or forming a 51st United States called North Colorado. The Denver Post reported uh, that a proposal to separate Weld, Morgan, Logan, Cedric, Phillips, and Washington, Yuma, and Kit Carson counties from the rest of the state was hatched at a meeting of county commissioners last week. So it wasn't Tea Party people. It wasn't rednecks with pickup trucks and guns in the back of it. It was county commissioners. Weld County Commissioner uh, Sean Conway, Mike Freeman, and, and Doug Redemacher said they will conduct public meetings and decide whether to draft a ballot measure by August 1st, according to a report in the Greeley Tribune. Uh, let's see here. Well, Weld County Commissioner Sean uh, Conway told ABC News that uh, his constituents feel, quote, ignored and disenfranchised. Um, by the state government in Colorado State Senate Bill 252 is the last straw in threatening their way of life. Conway said other county leaders plan, uh, plan of re response proposes that willing Colorado, I can't, let's see, uh, let me back up and read this again. Uh, other county leaders plan of response proposes that willing Colorado uh, Plains counties form a new state and call it North Colorado. Finally got it out. You say, yeah, man, yeah, new state, new nation, man. That's what we need, man. Um, and, and I agree with the sentiment. I absolutely agree with the sentiment. Uh, Pastor Reg is uh, down there in southern Missouri, and uh, he's got a website up called Operation Amputation. And I, and I like what he said. He said, we're not going to pull out from the union. We're going to kick out the stupid people. <laughs> That's what he, it's kind of what it is. And we're going to we're going to amputate off of the union what's bad and what's destroying the union. And it's just like uh, and and I had some uh, Hebrew roots people uh who were trying to catch me in some kind of uh uh guffaw or something like that about the Bible. They were trying to put me in a trap like they did with Jesus. They said, well, yeah, what a, the Bible does, you know, always mean what it says. What about when Jesus said, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off? You didn't really cut your hand off, do you? And, you know, always when questions like that come up, you never would just sit and think, uh, I wonder if someone asked me this question, if I, I wonder how I can answer it this. You don't hardly ever do that. And so they're asking me the question, and I'm going, Lord, how am I going to answer this? And after they asked me the question, I, I, I said, let me, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. If you went to the doctor and you had something wrong with your hand, and you go and find out from the doctor that you've got cancer in it or you've got leprosy in your hand, what's happening is your hand is now offending. It is, it is on the offense. It is offending the rest of your body. And if you don't cut that thing off, it's going to kill the whole body. And they went, well, yeah. So, I mean, just read. People read into the Bible what they want to read into it. But Jesus said, if thy hand, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. It's better for you to end into life maimed than it is for you to have two hands and you're into hell. And so if your hand had leprosy or had some massive infection on it, the guy that was walking, what was it, out in Utah or out in the desert somewhere, out in those canyons, and a rock fell and lodged his arm up against the canyon wall, and he was there for like 70-some-odd hours, something like that, he ended up cutting his arm off, cutting his own arm off to get out of there. Why? 
No, he had to. He was going to die if he didn't because his hand was offending him. And uh, that's kind of what Reg is proposing. That's a good idea. But here's, here's, here's the reality of, of, of what we're dealing with. And I, and I understand you want to f- form a 51st state so that you can, you can have it your way in that particular state. I understand that. And so I'm not necessarily against all these movements about secession and everything like that. But I will tell you that one of the problems in this is, is that we have been in the past a nation united. We are the United States of America. We're not that anymore. We are, we are a kingdom divided, a nation divided. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus, in verse 25, I like this one. The Bible says Jesus knew their thoughts. I like that. Um, because, and think about this, he, because he was the word of God. And the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it can discern the word of God, the Bible. The spirit that's in the Bible knows our thoughts, can discern that Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, and he was talking about this because they were accusing him of casting out devils by Beelzebub. And he said, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall that his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And it was in the form of Jesus Christ. But every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Um, don't we have a model? United we stand, divided we fall. And this isn't the first time that I and and I look at the the big picture of it. This is not the first time that um, our nation has been set up to fall. It happened uh, civil war. That to me was a setup to cause the nation to crumble. Um, and I always found it suspicious. And this is a historical. This is a historically documented fact that Jefferson Davis petitioned the Vatican to help win the war. Documented, documented fact. He wrote a letter to the Pope asking for his help. Wonder who was behind it. Wonder who was behind the, the destroying of America. Um, you think about, I keep going back to World War II because that's what's been in my mind. Germany on one half of the world, Japan on the other, and they all sign an agreement saying, we hate America. Let's try to kill it. And they, they did. They tried everything they could to destroy America. And God protected us and God blessed us and God kept us together. But now, right now, I don't know what I honestly don't know what would happen if we were ever invaded by a foreign power. It seems to me that most people, especially those living in cities, would just say, "Well, you know what? We we, we need them here. We need them here." So you have to ask the question. I mean, Colorado's these these counties in Colorado surely not the only ones in the world that are that are uh, thinking about this only ones in the nation that are thinking about something like this i mean it's in the thoughts and the minds of people and so i i the, the question that i asked in the tweet was will america be here in 10 years i don't have an answer for that i mean i really don't have an answer 
uh, and I like to have answers. Well, let's see some. Let's read some emails here. Appreciate those of you who sent emails in. Uh, there was one here. Let me see if I can find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Guy wanted to know. Here, here it is. Here it is. No, that's not it. There was somebody wanting to know how to be saved. Hang on here. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Um, hello, Pastor Mike. I'm not going to read the name. Uh, hello, Pastor Mike. I was listening to one of your Pastor Mike online broadcasts today, and you said that if you have been saved once and then go back to your old ways again, you cannot be saved again. Now, um, I, I never, I'm, I'm, and I'm not, I know you're not accusing me of anything, but I can tell you that I never said that. I, I don't believe that. I've never, never said that. Um, uh, let me let me read it again. He said that if you have been been saved once and then go back to your old ways again, you cannot be saved again. I'm so very sad right now because when I was 18 years old, I gave myself to Jesus and asked to be saved. Well, um, I want you to know, and uh, I don't I don't see in well I do see a name on here, uh, Roanne. I can tell you this: you ask God to save you, He heard you. 18 years old. He heard you. You gave yourself to Jesus, and I asked to be saved. Things then happened in my life, and I became dirty, downright sinner for many, many years, worse than before. Um, raise your hand out there if, if anybody else has ever done that. Raise your hand. Okay, one, two, several hundred of you. Okay. Uh, you're, you're in the, I'm telling you, Roanne, you're in the same company as a lot of other people. And so she says, I am now 48 years old and came back to Jesus about a year ago and, and asked to be saved. Does this mean that my prayers are not answered and I have been damned to an everlasting hell fire? The answer is no, absolutely not. Because I, I do believe, and the Bible clearly teaches, the idea of backsliding. Now, I will say this, that there are people who start out in belief who end in unbelief. That is a different issue. We're talking about what really a lot of people who watch this, who follow this ministry, have gotten into in their lives. At a young age, came to the Lord, grew up, went out and did everything they were told not to do. And then they came back to the Lord. God got them and came back. Did you know that they never, ever, ever, God never left them or forsook them. He never did. He never walked away from them. They walked away from God, but God never walked away from them. And the amazing thing is, see, if, uh, Rowan, if, if God didn't want you back, you would have never came back. You would have just kept going in the sins and, the, and more of them until you died. But God, see, the only, way, the only way that you can really pray to God and feel sorry for your sins is when God leads you into it, when the Holy Spirit draws you and leads you into it. If you're truly an apostate, you don't come back. You don't say, boy, man, I shouldn't have done that. You don't do that. The mere fact that the Holy Ghost of God working in you after, after you ran a course of sin and you said, you know what, I can't live this way anymore. The Holy Ghost began to draw you and pull you back. That's your evidence right there of the working and the power of God in your life. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in heaven. Hope you look forward to seeing me there too. All right. Oh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Hi, hi there, Pastor. I came across your website last week. Can't stop watching. Thank God for the truth. I thank God for your programs. I just finished watching program on Agenda 21, Molech and Gray Aliens. I have a question. I observed a big owl last winter in my neighbor's yard during the daytime. I had an eerie feeling about it, and it sat on the tree for a long time. The people living in the house, from all appearances, are doing drugs. Um, the woman is around 40 years of age, and she used to be an attractive woman, and yet her appearance is startling. 
uh, tattoos, uh, loss of teeth, and, and all over a body appearance is horrible. I've had problems with her before, and I wondered if she was oppressed by the devil. Uh, that one's easy. I, I would absolutely say yes. Um, and she has been married seven times. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, something about it, I feel unrest about it. And, and uh, also, if you have any jewelry with an owl on it, is it wrong, such as a necklace or whatever? Keep teaching the truth. Praise God for you. I've learned so much. Thank you for your sis. Thank you, your sister in Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. Um, I, I, I think it's possible. I remember and when we were talking about this in the, um, in the, in the uh, Mystery Creatures of the Bible and Where Dragons Live, and I had mentioned it here on this broadcast, too, about the idea that some of these abductees, alien abductees, are seeing owls, and they appear to be as sort of a, a sign that the aliens are near, uh, the earthly being a picture of the heavenly and so on. Um, and so I, I would say, now let me, let me back it up by, let me back up and say this. I was out yesterday uh, after I got home and had some uh, very low-carb supper. Um, I went out. I mean, I was feeling pretty good, and I put my work clothes on. I went out and was pulling weeds. I was pulling weeds out of our flower garden, and, and we've got a little walkway with uh, some big round stones in it for your feet and little gravels there, nice colored gravels. And the weeds, the little, little crab grass had grown up in there, and I sat out there for probably an hour and a half pulling crab grass out. The whole time I was out there, I could hear... I mean, it was almost nonstop, and it was like I could I could hear from one place, and then it'd fly around to the other, and then you know, it was, and it was the there the whole time. Now I never felt threatened, um, and uh, just because it was coming from the general direction of my mother-in-law's house does not mean that she is an alien or a witch or a drug user. She's my mother-in-law. Um, but I will say that it, it, it could very well be, it could very well be that, that there is a, a spiritual connection to this owl that you keep seeing out there. And, uh, as far as uh, your question about the owl jewelry, uh, I would say, number one, it's ugly. <laughs> I wouldn't wear it anyway. Uh, even though I've never seen it, uh, I would, I would probably stay away from something like that. All right. Oh, let's see here. Who else is one? No, no, let's see. That's an article. I'll have to look at those later. Uh, here's, a, let's see, here's another. Oh, here we go. Patrick uh, says, a friend who doesn't believe that the KJV is the inspired word of God, and he claims that there are mistakes, asked me to explain why it says in Genesis 22, 1, that God tempted Abraham, and in James 1, 13, it says that God tempts no man. Thanks. You know, I've wondered that. I have, I'll be honest with you, I've had that exact same question. Um, as far as um, I'd, have to, I'd have to do some more study on that one, Patrick, um, in order to do that. And the, the guy who, who believes that there are mistakes in the Bible, and the question I would ask is, does he believe that there are mistakes in other translations, too? Does he believe in general that the Bible is just a bunch of hooey? Um, or is he, just trying to, is he just trying to pull you away from the King James issue? If someone has uh, what they think is a really good answer on this one, maybe you've done some research on it before, uh, and you come across something, and, it, and it's, you just let me know, send it to me, and we'll try to, try to get everybody's attention on it, all right? Uh, let's see here. Mike. How you doing, Mike? Hi, Pastor Mike. God bless you for being here today amongst. Uh, this is Mike from Prescott. Hey, all right. I would like uh, to know what the 119ers, I think that's from 119 Ministries. I would like to know what the 119ers uh, that you reference now and then, what they are about. I've tried to find out to no avail. And with that is the guy that does the Wretched TV part of that. Do you know? I've Wretched TV. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that. Just trying to be informed about things. Thank you for your work and for all you do. The 119 Ministries is, um, they're buddies with Staley and all these other guys. Um, it's based upon Psalm 119. When you read Psalm 119, uh, you see a lot of statements in there about the law, the statutes, the commandments, the judgments, the word of God, so on and so on and so on. So that's why they named their ministry after that. 
really they are a they're a law keeping ministry. Um, they're trying to get across to everybody that the New Testament really the way it's written is all messed up. Uh, it it in if it was if we could read it in the original Hebrew that they say it would have been written in, then it would have said what they would have said it would say. And that, and that's kind of how they talk. You listen to them, they say, now, we know that Paul was a Hebrew. We know that he was a Jew. We know that he spoke Hebrew. And so what Paul would have said had it been in the original Hebrew, here's what, here's what Paul would have been saying if he would have said it the way we wanted him to say it. And they do a lot of that stuff. They, you, you'll never, you'll never, ever, ever attend a Jim Staley meeting or a 119 Ministries meeting or a Michael Rood meeting or anything like that. You will never attend a Hebrew Roots meeting where they will tell you, look, go home, get a King James Bible out and read Galatians and believe exactly what it says. They'll never tell you that in a million years. They won't tell you that. To them, the book of Galatians, the book of Hebrews, Romans, places like that, they are dangerous to their doctrine. This is why they spend so much time as they're doing a study on the book of Galatians to turn your head around 20 times so that, and, and with a blindfold on so you don't know how to pin the tail on the donkey anymore. That's what they do. And I've seen enough of 119 Ministries work. I've, I've seen, I know their, their methods, their their modus operandi, how they work, how they think. And I'm telling you, they are dead wrong. And I'm going to, as, as, as uh, somebody had uh, written in, uh, what was it, last week, was talking about, you know, the Hebrew roots people that he knows. And he said, I, I he said I understand them. They're just trying to really please God as best they can. I, I think with most of them, especially in the leadership and especially those who have just dove into this thing wholeheartedly, they're not. That's not their goal. Their goal is to be supreme over everybody else. And if you if you have ever encountered Hebrew roots people in an in a public forum like Facebook or some other some something like that, or talked with them, they're not nice people. They are all about religious supremacy. I'm better than you are because I do this and I do that. Oh, I believe you're saved by grace, keeping the law. That's all they are. So that's uh, that's one night, one nineteen ministries in a nutshell. And I don't know, I've never heard anything about wretched TV, so I I don't I don't know that I can answer that. Uh, let's see here, JD from NC. Hey, Pastor Mike, it's good to see you back in action. My wife and I missed you while you were gone. Looks like you're losing some weight. Does it really? How's that? Looks like you lose this weight. Good for you. We would hate to lose you due to an untimely passing. I appreciate that. I really do. Let me tell you something. I'm leaving when God says, Mike, you're leaving. That's what I'm leaving. Um, I am. I am taking care of my weight and my uh, my diet really for one reason and I'm just I'm going to be dead honest with everybody I'm taking care of myself for one reason and one reason only and it's not so that I can live another 50 years I, to be honest with you for me to live as Christ to die is gain I mean I want to do down here for my wife and children and grandchildren and my church and everybody all y'all out there I want to do everything I can but if a bus came up today and said hey Mike we're going to heaven. Hey, hang on a second. Let me get one more swig of tea here and I'll be, I'd go. I'd go. Now that I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be conceited. I'm not trying to be like, I don't care for you people. There's one reason why I'm taking care of myself. And that is so that I can stay off of the couch and sit here in front of a microphone or, or behind the pulpit. That's, that's it. And for my wife and for my children. So that's like one reason with a lot of people involved in it. Really, if I'm, be, I'm just being dead honest with you. I have always, all my life, wanted to grow old. No, I mean, I have. I thought it would be neat to be, uh, to be an old man, to be a wise old man. It's what I've wanted for, forever. 
But I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be healthy to prolong my life. That's not why I'm doing it. Because I can tell you, it won't work. It won't work. Skinny people get diabetes. Joggers have heart disease and they die. People who don't smoke get lung cancer. You see what I'm saying? We're, we live in a dead body already. It's going to check out one of these days. No matter, and uh, I don't remember, I remember where I was. You know how they're telling you, oh, eat fish. That's uh, healthy, heart healthy, omega-3 fats and all that. They tell you all that stuff. Then there's a guy on TV the other day telling everybody, quit eating fish. It's killing you. That stuff's killing you. Quit eating that stuff. And as far as healthy eating and healthy, who in the world do we believe? Because you got these people over here saying, oh, you got to protect your heart. And this guy over here says, oh, no, it's got to be in your mind and your, mu and your muscles. And this guy over here says, no, it's your digestive system. And they're all telling you, and I'm going, who in the world am I going to listen to? And the thing is, all these people who do all this stuff die. Some of them unexpectedly. So, and, and J.D., I'm not, I'm not being mean to you. I promise you I'm not. Uh, I appreciate everything you're saying. I guarantee you one thing. My passing will not be untimely. I promise you. It's a guarantee. It will not. As far as God is concerned, my passing will not be untimely. It will, however, be ultimately. All right? J.D., I love you, brother. Appreciate it. Maureen says, good afternoon, Pastor Mike. Many of our leaders have called the NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden a traitor. They say he violated his oath. How many of our leaders in Washington, D.C. have violated their oath to the Constitution and, most importantly, the Lord Jesus? They need the reminder about casting the first stone. I, you know what? I, Maureen, I, I think I agree with you. Um. The, the thing is, and here's why I'm hesitant to talk a whole lot about the whistleblower. Um, number one, we don't even know who this guy is. I don't know who this guy is. There's some people saying, did he work for the Russians? Does he work for the Chinese? Does, I mean, who, who is he really? Who is he really? And so rather than coming out in his defense, I mean, I just, I don't know that I can do that. But I can tell you that, I, and I said this last week, I think that we, the citizens of the United States, have as much right to know what our government's doing as our government thinks that they have a right to know what we're doing. And so on that, I would, I would agree with you. Now, let's see here. Who else? Uh, will I ever be doing a broadcast about Agenda 21 and Common Core. Hi, Tracy. Um, you know what, Tracy? Tell you what you do. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind doing it at all because I, I think I understand what the core of it is, what, what the underlying idea of it is. Uh, if you want to send me um, not two and a half hour long YouTube videos, uh, if you want to send me some documents, articles, things like that, printed out things or whatever, things that are highlighted, Pastor Mike, you got to look at this thing right here. This is it right here. That would help me an awful lot um, as far as the research because putting together the, the right amount and enough research to be able to do a Watchman broadcast or even this, uh, it takes a lot of work, and it would help me if, if people would pre-read things send me uh, highlight it and say this is this is what you need to look at right here and i've had people do that and it's been a big help so tracy yeah i am uh, i'm right with you sis and um so uh, help me out and we'll we'll see what we can get done all right hillbilly hair says we love you more than fried rabbit and i like fried rabbit uh rooting for you in your new diet praying too from the hillbilly family in kentucky by the way our name ain't about the cartoon we raise rabbits and we're hillbillies so it was just the natural choice i know but it just i can't i can't stop thinking about the hillbilly hair 
Uh, Lauren says, hello, Pastor Mike. Do you think that Revelation 18 is portraying the USA? There is no city that matches that description on earth. Lawrence from the Netherlands. Lawrence, let me help you this, all right? Uh, and I mentioned this uh, last week, and I, and I have talked about it before. Uh, Babylon is not just one locality like Washington, D.C. If you look at Washington, D.C., you will find Mystery Babylon everywhere. You also will, in if you go to the Vatican, you're going to see her there. Uh, and I did. I, I, I brought this out. Where it is? It right here. Some people up in Canada sent me this book, The Hermetic Code, and it's about the uh, unlocking of one of Manitoba's greatest secrets. This is her government building, Manitoba, okay? Winnipeg, Manitoba is Mystery Babylon. Tokyo, Japan is Mystery Babylon. Moscow, Mystery Babylon. London, oh my goodness, London. Mystery, it's got Mystery Babylon written all over it. We're talking about um, a... a well, I don't even know how to say it now. Re Re Mystery Babylon, I believe, encompasses every religion, every, um, every nationality, every nation. Th think, of, think of it like this. We have Jerusalem, which is above, which is free, which is the mother of us all. Those of us who are born again have Jerusalem above, a new Jerusalem, as our mother. She is a, she's a virgin mother, okay? Uh, not a harlot one. So all of those of us qualify as being her. I, I would hope that our church is a, is a place where New Jerusalem reigns, all right? Does that make sense? Likewise, Mystery Babylon's down here, and she's a harlot, and she has lots of children. She has lots of daughters, Multiple. It doesn't say Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of a harlot. She is the mother of harlots. The Vatican is one of those harlots. Washington, D.C. is one of those har My goodness. There isn't anything in Washington, D.C. that those people won't do for money. And so the United States is a daughter of Mystery Babylon. The Vatican is and so on. But she herself is a city, a spiritual city. And when I say the word spiritual, I'm not saying it doesn't really exist. It's just a philosophical context. I mean, literally a spirit, like the spirit of this earth, like Gaia herself. That's one of her names that the pagans have given her. I think she literally is this earth. Think of heaven, Jerusalem up there, earth, mystery Babylon down here. Because what's going to happen? What's going to happen to Babylon? She's going to be destroyed. What's going to happen to the earth? So just, and I've, I've read, I've heard and read from people. Oh, America's Mr. Babylon. And if you say anything else, they'll knock you down. But she's one of the, she's one of the daughters. All right. Bill, how you doing, Bill? This is Indianapolis, Bill. This is not just anybody, Bill. This is Indianapolis, Bill. Pastor Mike, blessings and kind regards. I'm a new follower, and I love you and the work you're doing. I just wanted to share something I saw on this morning's news. A woman from a European agency, sorry I didn't catch the names, has issued a statement to the World News Wire that fundamental Christians can be treated, as were sodomites 50 years ago, for a mental illness and thus deprogrammed. Just the beginning of what is to come. You know what? I don't know... Uh, about this uh, particular thing, but the spirit and the idea, I absolutely, and I've been talking about this, this whole thing. We're, we're going to get, we're going to get persecuted people. Just mark it down. Take your Bible. To, I had this open earlier. Turn to first Peter. <gasps> oh, Pastor Mike, you're not supposed to read first Peter. That's not for us. First Peter chapter four. In a book of the Bible that you are, not, it's verboten. You're not supposed to read that. You can't get any doctrine from that, Pastor Mike. First Peter chapter 4. Here's what, here's what the Bible said. Here's what all scripture, which is profitable for doctrine, says. Um, 
First Peter chapter four verse twelve. Beloved, beloved, we are in the beloved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, is to try you. And and I'm going to throw something in here. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to mess your head up or not. I, I pointed this out in uh, the Giants video. And I was doing some research. By the way, I have the I have the script for the next Watchman broadcast done. And the 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 idea of the pyramid. If you look on the back of the one dollar bill, you have the pyramid. It contains thirteen rows. It has seventy two stones in it. And I'm going to kind of go through this in the Watchman broadcast. But anyway, it's unfinished. But it's built up of all these 72 stones there. I think those are the 72 nations that are talked about in Genesis chapter 10. It's the peoples of the earth. Been scattered. Now we're bringing them all together now. Um, Manly Hall said this, that the pyramid, the reason why they gave it that name, and actually it, it, if Manly Hall never said this, I may have figured it out by, by itself. The word fire, our word fire in English, uh, is a derivation of in other countries when they do a funeral they put the guy's body on a little boat and they do what with it <laughs> they burn it it's called a funeral pyre p y r a pyramid basically looks like a flame that's what it is so on the on the unfinished fire amid you have all the people of the earth coming together and so on. And then you're going to have the capstone put on top of that. Think about Gnosticism. Think about the spark of divinity and how it says we're going to come to a full flame of divinity. Now, here's why I'm, here's why I'm saying all this. I, I have an idea here. I think that there are days coming that are going to be fire days. Peter was warning us about those days, the fire days coming up, where the divine light in everybody is going to come erupt to a full flame and so on. And so think about that. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened. What? I thought we were going to get raptured by now. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And uh, somebody called me and they were talking to him about this, and I agree with them. Brady preached it Sunday night a little bit. Uh, the idea that our eschatology should not be based upon fear. Don't base your eschatology on fear. Well, I don't, I don't know if I can handle persecution and tribulation. I don't know if I can handle that. I hope maybe I'm going to say Jesus is going to come back and get me before anything happens. Don't get me wrong. I believe, I believe in the translation of God's people. Man, I believe it. It's there. But I think that it's wise to prepare for something, even if it never happens. Don't think that when the pyramid gets built, the fire mid, and all of a sudden now we are under persecution. Don't think that that's such a strange thing. After all, we must, through tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. So I appreciate it. I, I, I agree with the concept, even though I'm not familiar with this particular deprogramming thing, I, I, I agree with the idea. Katrina, uh, could you give some advice on how to win the spiritual battle going on in my mind? After I was born into and raised in the children of God, I kind of know what that is. That was a cult, wasn't it? 
they did weird stuff in there, didn't they? I find it so confusing with so many churches and so many doctrines I can't speak in tongues. You're fine. And, and that is the advice I'm often given. Don't listen to it. I struggle to tell what I've been through. I can see bad times are really coming, and now that I have two children, finding truth uh, is very important. Katrina, God bless you. I love you. Um, and I feel bad for you. From what I remember, the children of God was a pretty nasty, pretty nasty little cult deal, okay? Um, bad stuff happened to you, didn't it? Um, let me, let me say this, okay, Katrina. Um, the Bible says that we, through patience and comfort of scriptures, might have hope. I would love to do something for you that I enjoy doing for everybody in the world, and that is I would like to introduce, I would like for you to say hello to my little friend. I would like, I would like, and if you don't have one, uh, you just call here and old Gare Bear will get you one. I'd like to introduce you to a King James Bible. And I would just encourage you to read it and read it. Start in the Psalms, read, read John, um, read Romans, read those things. And don't, and if someone's telling you, oh, you've got to do this, that's your first clue right there that something ain't right about them, especially the tongues deal. There's, you know what, the, let me tell you, the, the, those people that told you that, are hoping that it works. They're, they're, see, the idea behind it is, is that they believe that you're going to have this supernatural blast from God. It's going to be manifested in you speaking in tongues, and then all of a sudden, all the things that have ever happened to you and all the bondage that you've been all your life is instantaneously broken, and you walk around this super Christian the rest of your life, and you never fail. They told you that because they would like to see if it works. Because so far in them, it hasn't. Oh, they made it look like it does. But they were lying through their teeth. The truth of it is, what was your name, Katrina? The truth of it is, Katrina, most of the people that follow this ministry, I, I don't want to belittle you, but a lot of them are probably just as messed up or worse than you. And I'm telling you, they turn to Jesus through the pages of the Bible, and he gives them comfort. He'll give you, he'll give you and your children comfort in the days that we're living in. He'll keep you when nobody else can keep you. That's what he'll do. All right? Oh, good to be with you today. God bless you. I love you. appreciate you. Keep your prayers up for me and for the work. And uh, going to be recording a watchman this week, finally. And uh, pure Bible study. I'm going to do a pure Bible study. Two witnesses. I know their names. I do. I know their names. One and two. See ya.